And, um, but this is sort of a, a, a stop sign, a roadside, sort of a caution to the Christian uh, found in John chapter 6. And we'll read verse 66. And it says, From that time, many of his disciples went back. John 6, 66. From that time, many of his disciples went back and walked no more with him. And that's been going on for 2,000 years. People have stopped walking with Jesus. Verse 67 is the title of the sermon. Then Jesus said unto the twelve, Will ye also go away? I don't believe that when these people were with Jesus, as hard as it was, and as hard as Jesus might have preached some things, and this is the context of where we're at, he preached some things that were hard for them to understand, and as a result, they no more walked with him. I do not believe that anybody who left Jesus' side was better than when they were by his side. Amen. When they were by his side, he fed them. When he was by their, his side, uh, he took care of them. He calmed storms. Uh, he gave them water. He gave them bread. Uh, he gave them peace. He gave them instruction. He gave them doctrine. He gave them direction. Uh, he gave them a sense of, of unity and of commonality and of what was good versus what was evil, what was light versus what was darkness. Uh, you might have hard times in life walking with Jesus because that's the nature of life in general and the nature of walking with Jesus Christ. You will have enemies on the other side giving you a fit. Your flesh will give you a fit. It will be hard to walk with Jesus. It will be hard to be a Christian, but it's easier than trying to go at it all alone. Yes. I Amen. guarantee you. Amen. Yep. And yet I know this morning that as few as there are here, there might be somebody who's on the precipice, the doorstep today, or a week from now, or a year from now, where I would say, weren't you there when I asked, will ye also go away? And you might be like Peter, to whom shall we go? Thou hast the words of eternal life. Amen. And Peter even himself said, Lord, though they all forsake me, I'll not betray you. And the Lord Jesus Christ told Paul Peter that night, he said, you will uh, deny me three times, Peter. We can make proclamations. We can make declarations. The day of Joshua, they said there, he says, uh, he says, will you serve God? Will you walk with God? And they says, we will. And Joshua says, well, I don't know if you will or not, but me and my house, we will serve the Lord. And, but they said, we will. And he says, you know what he says to them? You cannot do it. And they said, we're going to do it. And he says, all right, this day you made a come between you and God. But I'm telling you, if you don't put away those false gods, it's never going to happen. Yeah, right. And you know what they did? They didn't say, we'll put away the false gods. But what they did say is, we will serve God. Yeah. But they never said, we will get rid of our gods. Yeah, yeah. A lot of people will make the declaration, the proclamation. They'll come to the altar. They'll pray the prayer. They'll make professions and confessions with their mouth that I will not go away. But you won't do what it takes to not go away. In fact, you will leave a lot of things in your life, people in your life, problems in your life. The past will stay presently in your life that will drive you to the point where you will go away, even though you don't want to. There are some steps you need to take to prevent going away. We should not be surprised when people leave the local church. But we should not be surprised when this happens. Or when Christians quit following Christ. 1 Timothy 4 and 2 Timothy 3 tell us this is going to happen. Yeah. This is also in perilous times. Things are going to happen. That's right. Some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. People leave all the time. Which is why Jesus Christ gave the, the question there, will ye also go away? Because he knows what's in the heart of mankind. And most of the times, God asks questions to prove you. Yes, that's, yeah. right. that's right. Amen. If your first answer is maybe, well, then you're here this morning, but you're not all in. That's right. yeah. that's right. You're already halfway out. But if you do have a heart's desires, no, I will not go away. Listen, I would rather a heart like Peter that would deny to his very core the very possibility or the existence that could arise where he would find a dead, that he would betray the Lord and deny the Lord three times, I'd rather have a heart that says, I will not. Yeah. Amen. Than say, well, yeah, I might. Yeah. Right. Amen. Because Peter got right with yeah. God. Yeah. Right. Right. 
Peter's desire was not to betray the Lord. Was it not to deny the Lord? He never saw a day where he could possibly do it. He never thought, now God knows more and God knows deeper. But God also knew that Peter's desire was sincere, was a just and righteous desire where he didn't want to have to do it. I believe the only reason why he did it was he got a little confused on that day yeah. as to why God was not allowing him to defend it, allowing Peter to defend Jesus. I think that's the only reason why he got out of sorts. Yeah. There are always a couple of reasons why people leave serving God altogether in the world, but leave the local church a good Bible-believing, yeah, independent, yeah. fundamental, Bible-believing Baptist church yeah. with good people in it. A decent, okay pastor, but really good people. Really good people. He prayed, Lord, you give us good, you bless with good people. And there are good people in this church. Really good people that I think have a heart like Peter and your desire is not to go away. I believe that. I've seen it. I've experienced it. But I still have to ask the question, will you also go away? I think people see, when people leave, they oftentimes say, Oh, they're leaving. I should go too. <laughs> they get a little scared. Mm -hmm. These things happen in the days of Noah. These things happen in the days of Moses. These things happen during the days of the kings. These things happen during the days of Christ. And they happen during the days of, uh, of Paul. Uh, people have been, have been betraying the Lord and going away for 2,000 years. And it only increases the closer we get to the rapture of the church. So this is where the thing goes. So when the cookie crumbles, I just want to be found faithful. Amen. When he says to the church, to the saints, and the faithful brethren, I want to be found amongst the faithful. I want to have a sense of stick to I want to have a sense that God, uh, I don't want to betray you. I don't want to deny you. I'll fall. I'll falter. I know I will sin in my flesh. But I don't want that to be the final story about Jeff's life. I'll make mistakes. I won't always treat people good. I won't always love my wife or take care of my kids the way I should, the way I, the way that God wants me to. And I have to acknowledge that and confess it, but I don't want my story to stop and end with the failure. Right. Amen. Amen. I don't want to be known as a quitter. Amen. I don't want to be known as, he just went away for something better. I don't want to just find something better. I want to stick with what God has given me to do. Amen. And I think that is the better place. Yep. Any place in the will of God is better than anywhere else. Amen. Amen. Let me give you quickly four reasons why people leave in general, but specifically the local church. Number one, convenience. It's just too hard to ignore. Conveniences. Conveniences are just too hard to ignore. In life, people like the conveniences. I preached about this last yeah. Sunday night briefly. Very briefly, last Sunday night, I preached about conveniences. They are just too hard to ignore. Look at verse 64. John says, But there are some of you that believe not, for Jesus knew from the beginning. Maybe that's Genesis 1 1. <laughs> for Jesus knew from the beginning who they were that believed not, and who would betray him mm -hmm. convenience it's just too hard to ignore modern day conveniences in contrast to the local church to serving God mm -hmm. Judas betrayed the Lord when the timing was convenient look at Mark chapter 14 hold your finger in John but look at Mark chapter 14 I mentioned this last Sunday afternoon and didn't have you turn there but I referenced it and now you'll see it firsthand. Mark 14, verse 10. Judas betrayed the Lord when the timing was most convenient to do so. Mark chapter 14, verse 10. And Judas Iscariot, one of the twelve, went unto the chief priest to betray him unto them. And when they heard it, they were glad and promised to give him money. And he sought how he might conveniently betray him. When Judas found a convenient opportunity to betray the Lord, you know what he did? He took it. Yeah. The convenient factor was just too hard to ignore. When Judas saw there was a convenient opportunity to betray the Lord Jesus Christ, it was too good to pass up. 
And you know what's going to happen in your Christian life? There will be convenient opportunities to go away. And for you, it will just be too hard to ignore the convenience of going away. When we read about the account of Judas betraying the Lord on the night that he took the bread and broke it, the Bible says that this convenient time was something that Judas sought for. It says that, we, it says that Judas sought opportunity. Judas sought opportunity. You know when it comes to conveniences and a convenient time to betray the Lord and leave serving the Lord or leave the local church? You know that the convenient time will pop up because you have been seeking opportunities to leave. That's right. Right about that. You know the, the devil, the flesh, and the world will always make sure to prevent the opportunity, the convenient opportunity, at the very time that you're most likely to uh, see it because you have been looking for the door. Exactly. You've been looking for the lights to go out. And the exit sign to be right there, and you sit in the back row next to the exit sign, and you tiptoe out and with your shoes off to make any noise. You open the door silently, you make sure your clothes are not making any noise in the dark, and you go out, and nobody even knows you're gone until one day you're like, Pastor, have you heard about so and so? Do you know where so and so is? We haven't seen Sister So and so in a while. Have you seen, have you seen her from her? Oh, yeah, she left without telling anybody. Yeah. You know why? She saw opportunity. Yeah. She was looking or he was looking for an opportunity to leave. And when the perfect, convenient time arose, out the door and don't tell anybody. Yeah. Can I just say this? Let's never be in God's way of doing things. That's right. That's right. Amen. God makes sure you know when it's time to go. Amen. And God always says, if you're going to someplace better, you're going to let your people know right. that you've been spending time with, that you're leaving, and to pray about the decision you're making to go. You don't do it in the dark. That's right. That's right. But men love darkness rather than light because That's their right. deeds are evil. You know why they do it in the dark and not tell anybody? It's because they don't want their deeds to be reproved. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. By golly, if they told somebody they were leaving, somebody might actually say, well, why? Yeah. Yeah. And then you have to say, well, because of this. And they're going to say, well, that's not a biblical reason to leave. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Are you sure you're not just getting out of fellowship with God? Yeah. Are you sure you're just not doing what your flesh wants you to do? You're conveniently finding an opportunity to betray the Lord. Yeah. And you know what? Nobody knew who it was on the day that they, uh, Jesus was betrayed. They all said, is it I? Yeah. Yeah. You know what that tells me? We all... Be willing to admit it, Christian. Yeah. We all are capable of betraying That's the Lord. Right. Because when he says this night, someone's going to do this thing as a sign of betrayal, and they all said, is it I? Is it I? Nobody said, well, it sure could be. It has to be. They said, is it I? Is it I? Is it I? Because they recognized it could be me. Yeah. Yeah. They all knew the, the capability was within their flesh to do yeah. so. But only one did. You know what he did? He slinked out. He did. Yeah. When nobody was walking. Yeah. Like a snake slithering to his den. Yeah. Yeah. He went. And a lot of Christians leave church that way. Yeah. Because the convenience of leaving is just too hard to ignore. Hmm. Before a Christian goes away from serving God, they see convenient opportunities to do so. Here are some convenient reasons to leave a good church. Closer church. Yeah. Hmm. A closer church. What do you have to throw out in order to go to a closer church? Now, I think about some of y'all that are driving a distance to get here. Now, I live right up the road. I ain't got to drive very far. But if I start calling out your distances, y'all know who you are that drive 30 plus minutes to church. Well, that's a ways to go to church. And some of you pass other churches to get to this church. And you don't think God sees that? You don't think I see and know about that? I don't have enough time to thank you or praise you and I don't think you'd want it anyways or to be able to repay you for what you're doing to get here but I am appreciative that you come so far but don't be deceived Christian there could come a time even going home today where you might say you know there's a closer church than that church that's a more convenient drive for me and you know what's going to happen you'll go regardless of your Christian growth where you've been going Regardless of the relationships and the discipleship you've received from the church you've driven to for years or a year or a time. Regardless of the fellowship that you've had, the prayers you've had answered, the prayers you've asked for, the growth that you've established in a church, you will leave at a convenient time to go to a closer church 
regardless of the people that are there, regardless of the prayers that won't be said for you there, and regardless of the preaching or the doctrine of that closer church. Yeah. You'll go because it's convenient. You know what convenient reason to leave? There's less conviction to deal with. Yeah. Yeah. That's a convenient factor. Yeah. Yeah. I, want the conveni I want the convenience of not preaching the sermon. Yeah. I liked it last week when we preached on eternal life, but there's convenient messages to be preached. And some people don't want to come to a church that will have a pastor preach a message like this because it's too hard, it's too deep, it drops too close to their flesh. Yeah. Deeper than the flesh. What they want is they want to be tickled. They want to be fancy. They yeah. want to be puffed up. They want some watered-down sermonette. Always the gospel every single Sunday yeah. to make them feel good that they're saved but don't look into their, anything deeper in their life. The convenient factor of fewer services are offered yeah. so they don't have to attend. Yeah. A closer church, they only have one or two services a week. There, I might be having to miss like two or three and people are going to notice when I'm not there. I feel guilty about that. I, sh I probably uh, should go someplace closer where there's no less, there's less services and people have to say, well, why are you missing? You know what I think about this? Listen, if you're going to church for God and the fellowship, we'll just take what we can get yeah. and God will take what he can get out of you. We're not looking to browbeat you. We're not looking to, you know, God to blow up your car, your water heater if you can't make all the services. Get what you can get while you can get there and enjoy it. But if you're coming, you always feel guilty. You don't come. Then there's a problem with you and God that you're feeling guilty. Yes. The peace of God passes our understanding. And what you're doing is with a clear conscience, God has said, go or don't go. This is okay with me. It's okay with the pastor. Then you know what? Have peace about it in your heart. Yeah, yeah. If you're feeling conviction, then there's something wrong right. with your heart. Right. And some would say, I'd rather not the conviction. I'd rather the convenience of lesser services. Preach it, brother. Because they know they're only driving 10, 15 minutes. They know they have no work schedule that prevents them to come. They know they have no exterior, uh, external obligations to prevent them. They just don't come because they would rather sit in their pajamas and watching reruns of Golden Girls <laughs> rather than the preaching now. Preach it, brother. Come on. We need it. The convenience factor of just watching services on YouTube. Yeah. I got one there and one there this morning because we don't have somebody to run it, so I'm doing both. That's the convenience of the internet so you don't have to go to church anymore. Because yeah. yeah. you don't have to find a closer church, the closer church will come to you. Yeah. Yeah. More social opportunities. Well, they have more things to do there. More events, more programs, more ministries. Well, you didn't even get involved in the ones you had when you were at the church. Yeah. But you're going to leave for more convenient opportunities to serve, more social opportunities. More feel-good style worship services. You know what John 15, 22 tells the preacher to preach? He says there, he says, uh, if I don't preach to you, John 15, 22. Let's just turn over there. I see Brother Todd's turning. Let's just turn there. John 15. Let me show this to you. That's not every service, not every sermon that can be, you know, sweet smelling things. Some of it has to be the unsavory stuff. Listen, if, you're, if your walk is right with God, if you know your heart's right with God this morning and you know where your heart is in relation uh, to where you want to be with God, then this kind of sermon just helps reinforce what you're already doing. That's right. Thanks. But if you are on the precipice, if you are dancing around on these kind of things, this sermon is the exact sermon you need to give you the opportunity to go. And I've seen it happen. I've had it happen. Pastor, you're too hard in preaching. It's like, well, look at John 15, 22. Jesus says, if I had not come and spoken unto them, they had not had sin. But now they have no cloak for their sin. Yeah. If I don't preach certain things to you, all I'm allowing you to do is stay cloaked up yep. right. in your flesh and in your sin. My job is to expose to you what's underneath the cloak. That's right. That's right. My job is to expose to you what's under the fig leaves. Yeah. Yeah. When Adam and Eve sinned, they covered themselves in fig leaves to hide up the fact that they had sinned. My job is to say, hey, no, you're miserable, you're poor, you're wretched, and you're blind, and you're naked in your three-piece suit. Amen. That's my job. 
If I don't preach about sin, what is sin? What constitutes sin? What could be a sin? That I'm not doing my job. Amen. My job is to preach on sin and hell and death and the flesh and the world and the devil Amen. as well as all those other things I preach about. Yeah, that's right. Amen. It can't all be sugar sticks and lollipops. Amen. Amen. Sweet and, what is this? Uh, sugar and spice and everything nice. Yeah. Sweet by and by, but it Amen. Yeah. Amen. It's truth, brother. Grace and peace. Listen, the grace and peace comes to help you realize, thank God for the grace of God, the yeah. peace of God, but never forget those things are there to help you get through the hard times. Right. Hard times are coming. Harder times are coming. Yeah. Yep. Number two. So number one was convenience. It's too hard to ignore. Number three, confusion. It's just too hard to believe. It's just too hard to believe. These are excuses, <laughs> is what they are. They're excuses. Yep. It's the convenience factor. They're too hard to ignore. Or it's just too confusing. It's just too hard to believe. I want to go someplace else where I don't have to think. I don't have to turn the pages. I don't want to have to memorize the books of the Bible. They'll have it on a screen for me, and I can just come in and just have a blank stare and just be, you know, tickled fancy by all the lights and all the plays and all the stuff. Listen, you need a Bible on your lap. You need pages to turn. You need to see with your eyeballs. Bless your heart, Brother Steve. I know you can't see too well. But you can hear still, praise God. You still know where I'm going with it. You need that. Amen. Amen. You need that. But see, they don't want to study their Bibles. No. They don't want to read the divine. They don't want me to preach about the Genesis uh, gap possibility. They don't want me to preach about the tribulational things. They don't want me to preach about the pre-trip rapture. They don't want to preach about the mark of the beast or eternal security or where do uh, where, where do babies go when they die. They don't want to think about it. Just, just give it to me very simple, very ethereal, very superficial. I don't have to think anything deeper than that or longer than what I want to think. I want to go home and just forget about it all. And guess what? My preaching ain't going to be that way. Yeah, right. Bible says, Paul says, I have shunned not to declare unto you the whole counsel of God. That's My right. job is to preach Genesis through Revelation. Yeah, that's Amen. Right. That's right. Or as one guy, one kid said, uh, generations to revolutions. <laughs> <laughs> that's my job. Yeah. The whole counsel of God rightly divided. The church is not Israel. <laughs> the body of Christ is not the local church. The local church is not the body of Christ. Yeah. The doctrines I was giving you a couple weeks ago, those things you need to know. Amen. Amen. That's right. But it's too much work in that, Pastor. It's too hard to believe. Well, the Bible says this, that God is not the author of confusion. That's right. That's right. If you're confused, you've got a God problem. Amen. Right. You've got a God problem if you're confused. In other words, you don't know God the way you're supposed to know God, so you're too confused trying to figure it out yourself instead of relying upon God to sort up the confusion. Or let me just say this, maybe you're not saved. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. That Bible says the Holy Spirit is given so he can lead you and guide you into all truth. Amen. Now, I'm not saying if you don't get it, you're not saved. What I'm saying is you never get it and you're always confused and you want to go someplace where they're not making you confused about teaching and preaching sound doctrine, then maybe you should check up with God as to whether or not you were actually born again. Because yeah, yeah. God is not the author of confusion. That's right. That's right. Now, you can blame me for being confusing. <laughs> you can blame me for not being a very good teacher. I'm, I'm guilty as charged, but I think more often than not, there's enough scripture to lay out for you. Amen. A brother came up to me after the morning service. He says, I was always taught that uh, babies, when they died, uh, they went to hell because of possibly original sin. He says, but I never considered the fact that with pagans, they offer babies. And then the brother back there says, uh, where was that verse in the Bible you said that the Lord will not charge them with sin? Or, well, there's no transgression. There's no uh, sin there. And I show them the Bible and it makes sense to them. Yeah, amen. You know why? That's God bearing witness to That's his right. word. That's right. That's right. That's right. If you get two, three verses here, plain as day before your very eyes, and you still say, well, I don't know. I think maybe you should just go to hell. God's predestined to go to hell. Then you're not reading right. plain scripture and you got a heart problem or a God problem. Amen. And I can't solve either of those things for you. Amen. Amen. <laughs> really, some Christians, there's some things Christians might be confused over which cause them to go away. Number one, over what they believe. They don't even know what they believe. Yeah, yeah. Right. right. They come stumbling in the church here, not even knowing what they believe before they come in. 
That's happened. They've left because they were never sure what they believed. Yeah. They get confused and they go away because of what's being taught. Yeah. Or number three, they get confused over what doctrine is true. Yeah. Christian, there's truth and there's error. There's sound doctrine and there's false doctrine. There's strange doctrine and there's scriptural doctrine. And I am not going to try to uh, pretend like there's not opportunities where people can get confused by what they read. So the Bible says, rightly dividing the word of truth. Amen. He's given to us pastors and teachers and evangelists for the purpose of preaching and teaching the word of God in its literal historical context with classical dispensational teaching behind it. And you'll just follow those truths there. You'll be in good shape. Amen. Amen. The problem is people come in with they don't know what they believe and they walk through the door. They've heard everything. Yeah. And they come in and want to change the preacher's mind yeah. instead of allowing their hearts to be changed, their minds to be yeah. changed. Yeah. They come with a sense of an argumentative spirit. Yes. And I'm starting to learn you just can't argue with people. No. <laughs> they're going to argue to their blue in the face, but they're not going to do anything unless they want to do it. And I've come to realize this truth too, Christian. There's little to nothing I can do to help you, but there's little to a lot I can do to hurt you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And me arguing with you will not help you at all. Yeah, yeah. I'll give it to you simple. I'll give it to you plain. I'll yeah. give it to you succinctly, best I can. Yeah. But I am not going to try to force you. You have got to work that stuff out between you and God. Amen. That's right. That's right. But I would say this. Don't go away because you're confused, because you don't know where you're at. Yeah. Pray. Ask questions. Yeah. Study. Read. Think for yourself. Amen. If God went through all that trouble to save me, why in the world could I lose my salvation? Can you just lose? I mean, just use, not lose, please don't lose any. Could you just use some common sense with God? Yeah, yeah. God's a God of common sense. He's not a God yes. of confusion. No. Right. And he went through all that to save you. Why in the world, the first opportunity you get to mess up uh, in your life, would he then take it all back? Yeah. That doesn't make sense. Yeah. And those verses that prove it don't make sense. Yeah, right. Right. They find the Bible too hard to understand, so they only read the highlights, the Psalms, or they only read, you know, a, a couple of verses here and there. The things that, you know, they like and the things they don't like, they don't read. The Bible says to read. Read it all. Amen. Cover to cover, Genesis to Revelation. Just read your Bible. Amen. Peter, 2 Peter 3.16 said there were some the hard things to understand. Concerning Paul's doctrine, he said there's some hard things there to be understood because there are hard things to understand. Go back to John chapter 6 and you'll see it there. When Jesus Christ is talking about eating and drinking his flesh and his blood there, they said this is a hard saying. There are some hard things in that Bible. There are some hard truths that Jesus preached that the folks did not understand when he said them. But that's not the reason to leave. That's, right. that's the reason to stay. Yeah. Yeah. That's the reason to get it clarified. Yeah. That's the opportunity to say, Lord, could you help me understand that? Yeah. But you know why he puts hard things in there? To prove you. That's right. Where's your heart over Amen. these hard sayings? Right. Where's your heart over these convenience thing, convenient things? He does these things to prove you. And in John 6, there, verse uh, 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 61, it says that the disciples murmured at it. Why? Because verse 60, it's a hard saying. Who can hear it? Your preaching is too hard or it's too confusing. Well, Jesus' preaching was hard and confusing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Think about that. Yep. Jesus Christ, he preached a confusing message. Some messages are meant to be a little confusing because yeah. it's meant to make you think. Yep. Amen. And it checks up, have you been reading your Bible? Yeah. Really? There's four possibilities as to why some don't understand the Bible. Number one, their mind or intentions are corrupt when they approach the Bible. 1 Timothy 6, 5, 2 Timothy 3, 8. Number two, their heart is waxed gross so they cannot understand. Matthew 25, 7, uh, Matthew 15, 13, and Acts 28, 27. They're not saved, 1 Corinthians 2, 10, and 11. Or they're not rightly dividing, 2 Timothy 2, 15. One of those four reasons. Your heart is corrupt, your intentions are corrupt, your heart is wax gross, you're simply not saved, or you're simply not rightly dividing. Any one of those four reasons are opportunities for confusion in your life. Yeah. Number three, the conditions. The conditions. It's too hard to ignore. 
Look at verse, uh, we already saw verse 60. It says, many therefore, of, uh, many therefore of his disciples, when they heard this, said, this is a hard saying. Let me just briefly give you some conditions that make it very easy to go away. And this leads to the convenient factor. The facility conditions. Yeah. Can't do anything about it, church. Unless God gives us a better building, a bigger building with more separated rooms and whatnot, there's not much we can do within the facilities we have. I can't change that. You control the controllables, and what you cannot control, you don't concern yourself with. That's right. Amen. That's right. That's what I'm teaching them, my children. Yeah. <laughs> and adults still want you to control things you just can't control. I can't control what they do with the church, with this building, when we aren't here. So I've had to learn I can't control those other tenants, yeah. those other renters. When I come in, it is what it is, and it's not going to change unless they change, and they ain't changing. No. So all I can do is control my emotions, my attitude about it. Yeah. And you know what? We'll clean it up. We'll set it up. I've got two back there, Dennis and Lo uh, uh, Lois there, my God. body there. That helps set up the church and do a great job of helping those things out. And it's taken away a great burden of concern. Because oh, you don't need me being all worried about it and frustrated about it. You need my heart and mind set on the things I need to do. Amen. So I either come in frustrated or I come in, it is what it is. Amen. I like to do better. I look all the time. I pray all the time. Lord, if there's a better place, please show me. He ain't showed me yet. So guess what? Yeah. We're going to camp out until he does. Amen. Right. Yeah. Some other conditions. Health conditions get too hard. Now listen, you know, this is one of those things here where everybody's health is at a different stage mm -hmm. in their life. We all have health conditions. Mm -hmm. And sometimes those health conditions keep us from coming, no doubt about it. Yeah. You are just in no way, shape, or form getting to church. Sister Kay, you won't be able to get here in a couple of... So we understand that. Yeah. Those are the conditions I'm talking about. Health conditions are simply opportunities, conveniences where you always have the excuse. My wife always gives me the story of her former boss. When he didn't show up, they'd say, why aren't you coming in? I got diarrhea. <laughs> now, who's going to go check to see if he's got diarrhea? You see what I'm saying? You know what I'm talking about. You know those employees that you can't really confirm or deny whether they're actually sick or not, but they always got that one thing yeah. that you just cannot be sure if it's true or not, but you got to think about the word. But they're out of the golf course or out of the boat, something like that. Health conditions are just too hard to make it here. And you know what? I am appreciative of all of your health conditions, and you get here anyways. Yeah, yeah. Health conditions keep us out. Well, let's not let it be the excuse for yeah. convenience. Yeah. Driving conditions. Sometimes, Christian, yeah. Yeah. sometimes, it, brother. Come on. sometimes it's not about how bad it is. It's just how bad that you don't want to go. Okay. Financial conditions. Listen, you give if you can give, and you don't give if you can't give. We pass the plate, we pass the offering plate. It's not about how much you give. It's about the heart of the Amen. giver. Amen. But Christians do think about it, and they get scared about it. And if the pastor ever does preach about it, they think, he's yeah, it for them. Yeah. And he's not. No. It's just something that's in the Bible, Amen. like dress code. If it's in the Bible, you've got to preach about it. But you know what it all boils down to is their spiritual condition. Yeah. Yeah. Facility, can't do anything about it. We come into the same building when God moves us. But your spiritual makeup will determine what you think about the conditions of the facility. Yeah. Health, oftentimes your spirituality will dictate how bad your health is to make it or not. The driving conditions, oftentimes your spirituality will determine whether or not it's too bad to drive. Yeah. Financial, it'll be your spirituality condition, your spiritual condition, that'll determine how much money's really a factor as to why you do or don't go, why you do or don't give. When conditions become hard, this is where convenience like Judas and the desire to be comfortable like Peter who was warming himself by the fire get in the way of walking with God. When the conditions get hard, it is not a time or an excuse to quit, but to endure. 2 Timothy 2.3 says, Thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. And that hardness is in so many varied shapes. I don't say it's all one hard thing equal across the board. Hardness comes in many shapes and sizes. Can I just close with this? The consequences are too hard for you to imagine. The convenience might be too hard to ignore. 
the conditions may be too hard to endure. The con confusion it might be too hard to believe, but let me just tell you this. If you go away, you cannot begin to imagine how hard it's going to be out there yeah. without God, Amen. without the truth, without sound doctrine. <laughs> Folks that leave this church, have left this church, will leave this church <coughs> for one reason or another. Generally, it's over doctrinal reasons. Not that our doctrine's wrong, but they don't line up with our doctrine. Or they don't understand or it's confusing to them. Get sucked <laughs> up into some other yep. yeah. false doctrine. Calvinism yep. Yep. is a big one. Post-tribulationalism, yep. that's a bad one. There's a lot of Jehovah's Witnesses. Mormonism, I've seen it all. The Bible says, Be not deceived, God is not mocked. That's right. Whatsoever man soweth, that shall he also reap. Amen. Amen. You know what's going to happen? If you sow to yourself convenience opportunities to go, there'll be convenient opportunities to sin. Yeah. 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 You know what happens when you sow yourself confusing thoughts and confusing ideas about the church? You'll be more confused out in the world. That's right. Because the world's confused right now. Sure they don't even know what gender they are anymore. <laughs> <laughs> conditions are too hard to endure when you leave because the conditions inside here are too hard don't you know the condition the world is in is far worse than the condition of this facility yeah. Yeah. or of your health even yeah. in a lot of ways or of the weather in a lot of ways the conditions of this world it's a mess folks yeah. Yeah. and Paul is warning the church he's warning the pastor Timothy and he's saying listen preach the word be instant, in season, out of season. Reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine for the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine but shall heed themselves teachers having itching ears and they shall be turned from the truth unto fables. Right. Yeah. That's right. That's right. My job is to preach Amen. regardless of the conditions. Regardless of the conveniences, regardless of the confusion, my job is to preach because the consequences are too great for me not to. That's right. And the consequences are too great for you That's right. if you don't stay. Amen. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord.